and just the colors that are coming across from here from the light coming on you know this is like the last for a twosome of the day that's teeing off here. So it just has all of these wonderful things in it. On a given week, um, I personally will have gone through maybe 40 or 50,000 wire images and a, an edited version of our uh, material that the rest of the photo editors go through. So uh, easily 100,000 pictures to, to choose um, three. This particular picture I found interesting. She went through the area and has kicked up all of this nice blue ice, which is uh, um, a little bit unusual for a skiing picture. And, you know, it's, I think it's framed very nicely. Uh, the colors are there. It's really sharp. Um, so this has a little bit of a lot of elements, Apollo Ono. And again, uh, we've seen a lot of these kinds of pictures before, but I thought this was really, really nicely framed with the arm of one of the competitors, you know, sort of going around him. And, and you can kind of get this feel of movement. I want people, when they look at the magazine and they see any picture that's in the leading off section, to go, ooh. Um, and that's basically it. I mean, they have to be um, stimulated. They have to be moved in some way, either visually, um, emotionally. Um, and if that happens, then I've done my job. My reaction was, you know, it, it definitely fit into that ooh factor. It, it, it disturbed me visually. Um, and there was some news element to this because there was, there was um, accusations by the, the Welsh team that the Argentinians played dirty. And they denied it until this picture was published. And then they apologized. Soccer is a, it's a difficult um, sport to photograph. But uh, to me, again, this, this incorporates a lot of the things that we're, we're, we're looking for in, in like a good action picture. We um, take a great deal of pride uh, both on the you know content of the magazine, but also the qualitative uh, side of uh, of photography here. The leading off section was redesigned or or designed to uh, <coughs> be included on on a weekly basis. Six pages up front, basically three spreads. I think we get enough baseball, basketball, football, whatever is in season in the main magazine, the body of the magazine. I've always treated the leading off section as, as, a, as an opportunity to showcase photography from all around the world. And this was um, Grant Hackett, um, who was an Australian swimmer, um, sort of up below in, uh, the water and above the water in the, in the very famous Sydney Bridge. Uh, and this is a kind of picture that I always find to be intriguing. It's a little bit different. You look at it and you, um, you, you can kind of say, what's going on here? Uh, we've, we've run versions of this before, some better than this. And I've also, I've often described it as, as looking like a um, Jackson Pollock painting, where it's just like swaths of, uh, uh, of color thrown onto a white canvas. And this is sort of like the bird's eye view as they're approaching you. Um, so again, uh, strong graphic content, good color, um, and something unusual that's not baseball, basketball. Thank you very much. And this last one is the one that, uh, that keeps me going. This just won first place. Uh, it's odd that it's in this, um, but it's this one first place in uh, World Press Photo this year. Um, Paralympic swimmers, um, where this guy, uh, Xavier Torres, is diving in. That's his prosthetics that he's left. Normally that's used for shoes and, and, uh, and clothing, but he left, his, uh, he's left his legs there. So to me, this is all about you know, taking the leap of faith. Um, leave all your shit behind and dive into the pool. Our new editor here, our new, I mean he's been here about three, four years, uh, treats the leading off section as more of a news hole. He likes things that are a bit more topical, a bit more newsy. He also likes them to be, if possible, related. Um, so it's not um, easy every week to get the, the right mix. My responsibility is to present them with um, a variety of choices. And I love this that there was a story behind it too, you know, mother, daughter, mother, daughter, you know, training for the triathlon, but just the, the way that the photographer approached it, the, you know, the composition, the, you know, the fact that it's done underwater, the reflection, everything on it that's going on. And when I showed this, the creative director said, well, this is the kind of picture you'd find in a photo magazine. And I said, thank you. And that's all I said. Um, I couldn't ask for a, a better compliment to come as an insult. Uh, you know, I thought he—I think he was trying to say that you know this is ah, this is just like a you know I don't know what he was trying to say, but we were actually able to publish it, and I was very very happy that um, we did. Um, 
I will continue to show things that I think are either stunning, beautiful, artistic, graphic, colorful, action, crunch, grace, you name it. If it's, you know, a, an interesting enough picture, I'm going to show it. Now, the same, same philosophy, you know, it's a picture that you feel. Um, and it was very disturbing because his body, nobody's body should do this. You know, his body is going forward and his head is pull, being pulled backwards. But uh, again, it's a very strong um, visual. You know, you can tell that there's something going on here, and you can almost hear the the the, the body is colliding, and and you know all of these things sort of like flying off. Um, uh, it, 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 the first few of these pictures, you know, do make you cringe a little bit when you look at them. <laughs> the reason I like this one so much is because you actually see, you know, the the anguish on on Gary Stevens' face here, uh, which wasn't quite visible in some of the other ones. So this is both. You know, content-wise, uh, expression, um, you know, and and composition, you know, work for me. Um, there's some motion going on because the guy's <laughs> got his face hit, um, so which is causing this sort of distortion in his lips and his cheeks and all of that. But there's sweat and everything else coming. But anybody that you know um, looks at this knows that this is what they do when they box. They they hit each other. There's a lot of pain involved uh, sometimes. Uh, ditto the the football. I mean, they you know um, they describe it as a war. You know, they, it's played on the on the field of battle. But I think the beauty of this picture is that it caught a moment that the video can't. You know, when you watch it on video, you hear it, and and then he's down. Um, but you don't actually see all these little pieces of the helmet as they're flying off, um, and and also to have the ball because this has already hit his head and it's coming back. So um, you don't get to see that in a video. A little, this is a little disturbing um, because you know you you when you first look at it, um, you don't realize that that's somebody's hand, you know, and, and an arm sticking out there. But anybody that saw this race. Um, will know, and, and if they read the newspapers, that he actually survived. Uh, he did not, we, I, I doubt, well I know for sure, we would never show an accident um, where somebody died unless it was um, uh, a journalistically driven. When you edit for um, a news magazine, I think you're, you're looking for things that have a much more journalistically driven content. Uh, things that speak to the story that the photograph is about. Uh, one of my biggest contentions at Newsweek when I was there was that we would show a bunch of pictures and they would nine times out of ten pick the mediocre picture that was more to the story than the better picture that was tangential to the story. The better picture I would argue with them and would continue to argue to this day. You can always write in into the caption. You can always write in into the story. If you got the better picture, why not run the better picture? At a sports magazine, it's generally the other way around. If you've got a rock'em sock'em picture, they'll find a way to write that into the, into the story. Uh, you're not going to pick a picture just because it's mentioned in the story. It's not going to necessarily be the lead picture because it's a mediocre picture. We're always going to want to lead with the best picture. Um, somebody in the Giants has just hit a hit and he has just scored, this is JT Snow, has just scored from third base. And Dusty Baker, who's the, at the time, was the um, manager for the baseball team, um, this is his kid, who was a bat boy. And he didn't know enough that, you know, he was just going to go around and pick up the bat, like he usually does at the end of everybody, you know, when they strike out or whatever. So he actually interfered in the way of the play. JT Snow saw him running out, and after he, you know, as he comes across the home plate, he touches, he grabbed him and pulled him out of the way. You can tell the catcher is trying to get him out of the way. The umpire is worried about him because there's another guy coming, you know, who was about to try to score. So if this kid was still there and there was a collision at play, oh, it could have been horrendous. My uh, contention is if it's a great picture, it belongs to the magazine, whether we took it or not. Um, but I would be remiss if I did not show everything that I thought was worth uh, being considered. So. Uh, to me, the overriding factor is the content um, and not who took it. There's a, another shot from, um, you know, the, I think it's the Austin American Statesman, local level high school football. Um, and some of the best pictures, you know, as I said before, I think are being done on that, uh, on that level, you know. And, um, and I'm really, really happy to see that because um, it gives us an opportunity to pick up some things and have some, you know, greater visibility for some very good photography that's being done out there. You don't have to be, <clears throat> you know, in in those premier positions to make a really nice picture. You know, when when 
you know, all else fails and you can incorporate something else like the environment to do something like this, both in, you know, in content and color, um, you should, you should just look, you know, do everything you can, you know, sometimes turn around, look the other way, you know, when the action is going on in front of you, turn around, maybe the faces of the people watching it are more interesting than the action itself. And in here too, um, you know, just incorporating the, the colors and the, and the graphics can make, um, an overhead picture, which is, which could be, you know, rather ordinary, um, sometimes extraordinary. Um, um, and I have an affinity for, for animals, <laughs> as you can probably tell. Uh, I think they make for some very, very compelling images. Uh, and animals are athletes, too, in their own right. Um, there's, there's a lot to be said for pictures like this. Uh, there is a home for it in, in our magazine and leading off or wherever. Uh, to me, this is a very, very compelling picture. Uh, not only because of the teeth and the eyes, but of the, you know, of the form. So I'm looking for you know potential things for leading off, um, and and as I said, if I go through 40 or 50 thousand of them uh, and come up with 25, um, that's a lot. Uh, and then we show those 25 in a room to the editor of the magazine. See, is this cool? I think these three are our best basketball pictures of the week. Yeah, I know you. Hands do. down, and they also are the flying bodies they all, they all work together as a thematic kind of thing mm -hmm. what this hap what would this would mean though is that we would lose the women from the I know so which of these do you like best that one and Texas Tech is still in right that is correct how about this hello basketball do it's, these it's better okay that's a good good thing I guess he does it, I think, from a much more of a packaging uh, viewpoint. I do it strictly from a, a visual and photographic uh, viewpoint. I'm going to show both what I think are the most interesting, most visually compelling pictures, and most newsy and topical, knowing that he wants that too. So there's there's a lot of elements to come into play when I when I put this together on a weekly basis, and then. As I said, it's his candy store. He's going to choose which three that he wants. Lynn Johnson went to the Dominican Republic and photographed these kids playing baseball in the streets with, with pieces of wood and tree limbs, and, and they use rocks for baseballs, and, and, and an you know, old tire was home plate. And we published these pictures over three spreads. We got a huge, huge reader response saying, you know, I've got a bunch of bats in my garage, and I've got some old gloves. I would love to send these kids. So. We must have received, uh, you know, hundred letters and, uh, and emails altogether. So what I did with Lynn Johnson is I contacted each and every one of those people that sent the letter and saying, you know, in addition to baseball bats and gloves, they, these kids also need loose leaf paper and book books and and backpacks and and school supplies. So if you want to send a, a bat. You know, also send a you know uh, some loose leaf paper, or if you want to send a glove, send send a backpack. And all of these people responded, and we wound up with 12 crates of equipment and loose leaf paper and baseball uh, bats and, and backpacks. And, um, and we, Lynn Johnson and I, used our frequent flyer miles, took all of this equipment, went back to the Dominican Republic, in this little town of Bayaguana, population 1,200, found these kids, gave them the bats and balls, and then donated all the rest of the stuff to the, to the local school for communal use. It's a labor of love, um, and I've also described um, it as being one of the best jobs in the business. I, I have I have six blank pages. This is like starting with a, a clean slate, and um, I get to fill it with with three pictures. Uh, I think it's really really cool.